Well, hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jason Levine, and thank you so much for joining me today for the Friday Master Class, where today we're talking about automating the sound mix in Premiere Pro. And uh, this is something we've revisited in past streams. As it turns out, and I think I've mentioned in a couple of previous recent streams, uh, I've been working on some internal podcasts. Well, we have a series that'll be uh, coming out probably at the, sometime at the beginning of next year, and they're video podcasts. And uh, so I've been doing a lot of editing of these things and wound up having to do quite a bit of automation on the sound, primarily because the, a lot of these, at least in this first series, were captured live at max, kind of on the show floor. So dealing, dealing with a lot of noise, a lot of background elements that needed to be sort of gated away or denoised. Um, but then also trying to isolate voices when there's bleed between multiple microphones. So we're going to cover some of that. We're going to cover some of the sort of sound designy elements of automating. Additionally, if you've never tried to automate parameters for audio effects in Premiere, it's really useful. I mean, if you've never done it and now you understand how to do it, it will change the way that you mix sound, even if you're not a great sound mixer. Like, it's just gonna ultimately change the way you do things and sort of create better sound, better mixes, more exciting mixes, but in a lot of cases also, really kind of fine tuning and isolating specific elements within a mix. And we're gonna lean heavily into the uh, dynamics effect specifically around the auto gate. Again, showcased gating in previous streams. If you've never used a gate for um, dialogue capture, particularly whether on set or for an interview, it's, it's an essential thing, all right? It's so great and it is one of the many effects that I truly love. And it's also supported in both an audition. Probably gonna take a look at some of this in audition too. The same stuff is applied, uh, the same stuff applies in audition. The only difference is that because it's a slightly different mixer, it's color coded a little bit differently. I actually prefer the way that we view it in audition. A couple other little things that we can do in there, which I think are a little bit smoother. But again, we'll kind of take a look at this and showcase all those things. So of course, we're coming to you live on a couple of different networks today and hopefully everything's going smoothly. So uh, glad to see you here actually while I'm doing that. I, uh, I'm still, I don't know if I mentioned last week, I'm, I've, uh, I've lost my, uh, I've lost my commenting computer somehow. Let me rephrase that. I've lost my, um, my iPad with what I typically use for commenting. I can't, the studio is a mess. I've been reorganizing. I've been moving stuff around. I've, I've misplaced it somehow and it's thin and small. So it's not the 12.9, it's like the old, it's an old school like seven inch or seven nine or whatever it was. I can't find it. So uh, I'm relying on uh, clips here. Anyway, I see we've got uh, Steve and RB and uh, Paloma and Gino and Sam and Umicorn. All right, how's it going? Oliver, great to see, see you all. Thanks so much. Cody, how's it going? Okay. All right, so uh, why don't we go ahead and get into it? I think we're... Yeah, it looks like we're live in all the places we're supposed to be, so that's super fantastic. Let's go ahead and switch over to Premiere and uh, talk about this. Now, you're also gonna get a little sort of visual sneak, audio sneak to you, I suppose, of, uh, of this podcast, which features my colleague, Teresa Au. Uh, she's on our larger Creative Cloud community team, and she is the host of this series, and uh, probably gonna get to uh, see this, like I said, early January, hopefully maybe a little bit later, and, and hopefully uh, we'll have this sort of widely distributed so that you can watch on lots of different networks and listen where podcasts are, you know, uh, hosted. So should be pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna play a couple of things here um, just to kind of give you an idea. Now, before I do anything else, just to be very clear and upfront ahead of time. So where this was recorded, this was done live at Adobe Max a couple, uh, well now it's almost two months ago, actually. Um, and uh, we had this sort of glass box structure where Teresa was conducting the interviews. So as you can imagine, before I even say anything else, glass box, not the best environment for recording interviews to anyone thinking about doing something like that in the future. Uh, and as a result of said glass box, it required a lot of a lot of tweaking, a lot of denoising, like sort of multi-stage levels of softening or attenuating noise, compressing, uh, and then again, using some gating as well. 
if I have time at the end, maybe I'll play for you kind of the final version where, so this is not, this is, this is an earlier uh, edit of this. But again, your environment is going to dictate the amount of sort of audio processing that you're going to need. So just up front, you may not need to automate things in most cases. What we're going to do here is automate specifically uh, the auto gate and the gating threshold among other pro uh, parameters because because of the close proximity of how each person was mic'd, because of the ultra reflective nature of where they were, there was just a lot of bleed. Um, and you know, it just, it, it happens sometimes. I unfortunately wasn't involved in any of the, the, the production itself. Maybe some of that could have been prevented, maybe not. Again, glass box, it's, it's, a, it's, a, tough, it's a tough venue to capture in. So, um, so just to sh sort of showcase here, you can see that on the three uh, the three tracks related to the three people here, got you know combination of denoise, uh, one of my favorite compressors, the LA two A. Again, not so much to amplify, but just to even out dynamics. Um, it just so happens that you know again labs and kind of moving around, and there was a ton of background noise because this was on the Max show floor. So you were just getting sort of uneven speech in some cases. Actually, uh, so this is featuring uh, Justin Wen here on the left and Jerry Wan on the right. Uh, Jerry is a public speaker and uh, they're both great speakers, but Jerry has a very sort of even toned, even leveled out voice. So you'll see when I play his back in particular, actually he was, he was the easiest of the three to sort of clean up and fix. However, his mic still had some of the same aforementioned issues, some bleed, some other, you know, just sort of noise related things that we had to tackle later on. Uh, so again, so some noise on there. And, uh, you know, um, just to make things louder and just a little bit more present on the stream again, I've just got sort of the ultra uh, maximizer here just to kind of amplify everything so it's not quite so quiet. Okay. All right. What's up, Vanessa? How are you doing? Okay. All right, very, very good. Okay, so let's um, let's take a listen. I have the uh, the three mics currently open, so just wide open here, um, just to kind of let you hear sort of how it sounds. And I want you to pay attention to the level meters here. So I'm actually, I'm gonna put on headphones so that you're not getting uh, bleed from my mic. So one of the first things that uh, that I ran into when applying the gate. And by the way, just to kind of showcase here. So again, this is our, our track effects inserts. And using the dynamics effect, we have this sort of four stage gate compressor expander limiter. Now I've said before, uh, UI wise, this compressor is fine. Sonically, meh, I don't love it. So I never use it. Whoops. Uh, the expander and the limiter, I mean, the expander is what it is. You can't really say, oh, I love the sound of that expander. It doesn't really have a sound. Uh, the limiter, mm, I don't love it. We have other choices for that. Sometimes I will use the compressor just to kind of keep it all in one effect, one stage. But the gate, this is the only native gate that we offer, is fabulous. Uh, you can set super fast attack. It has the, the extra hold. The only thing missing is a, is a floor setting. So you see this in a lot of old school uh, gate devices, devices, uh, you know, uh, outboard gear, SSL, where, so the whole idea of a gate, right, is that someone is talking and maybe there's noise or some other sort of thing going on in the background. So gate or window, think of it like a window. So when they're talking, the window or the gate is open. And when they stop talking, the gate closes. Now, in this case, it closes to silence. A lot of other noise gates that you'll have in, in other uh, effects, and again on like classic uh, consoles, will often have a floor setting. So essentially, rather than going down to silence, you can actually leave some of the background noise just, just there ever so slightly. So sometimes it's not quite as dramatic, especially if you're in a very noisy environment. And this is for things like, you know, I, I can think back in the day I would have used this for Oftentimes if there was a, you know, like a lead guitar solo, and sometimes there's just a bit of that amp that was sort of nice. Um, maybe you want a bit of that. You wouldn't want like a buzz that you just want to gate to silence, but sometimes you want just a bit of that sort of amp hum warmth. Um, there's reasons for that. This does not have that. So that's my only, that's my only criticism with this. 
Anyone who's never used a gate doesn't know what I'm talking about. They're like, what the, what is he talking about? Trust me. Anyway, this is great. We're gonna focus on using this. Now, I already have the gates set up and I've already adjusted the thresholds to the best of sort of trying to, again, open that window when they're talking and close when they're not. The issue is, as mentioned, well, one, there's a lot of noise, a lot of stuff going on in the background. Because I have denoise first in the chain, I've already kind of taken care of most of that. The other issue though, as mentioned, is that you have close proximity here and just however this was done, however it was recorded, when some people are talking and they're loud, they're triggering the gate from their sort of next, next to companion and it's, it's opening that gate, which means it's also opening up noise and other things to be heard. And you get this kind of, it, it's, it doesn't sound great. So let's take a listen here and see if you can spot, and again, kind of pay attention to the meters as people are talking. I'm gonna skip a, skip a couple sections here. Here we go. Thank you. And I love that you and Justin um, wanna give back and teach others mm -hmm. all about the creator economy. So I remember you did some LinkedIn audio events, right? Yeah, yeah. Those were awesome. I mean, I think when it came to like the rise of Clubhouse, right? That was the big butt. Okay. So if you're listening now, you're like, okay, well, I hear the, the noise kind of going in and out. Now, again, this is not the finished version. And as I've taught in other uh, master classes in the past, there's a way to mask that by essentially adding back in some sort of very low crowd noise and other things. And again, readjusting the denoiser here. This was just to kind of get it to a baseline level. But if you were paying attention to the meters, especially in those last couple of seconds, what you would have noticed is that Justin had a, a really sort of deep, sort of baritone -y, uh, um sort of fundamental of his voice. And he's talking right at Teresa and it kept triggering the gate and it kept opening the gate up. Now you might say, well, why not readjust the threshold so that doesn't happen, right? The threshold, much like in a compressor, the threshold is the point at which upon exceeding the threshold, the effect kicks in, right? So if I wanted to make it less or more aggressive, like hold off on, you know, higher decibel signals, I would lower the threat, well, lower, it's negatively logarithmic. So from 29.5, I might put it up to minus 22. The issue is that Teresa, speaking on her microphone, wasn't as consistent or loud as his voice. So then it wasn't always triggering when she would talk, right? So what that means is that I need like a, a dynamic gate, which is going to basically adjust that threshold as needed, right? Which isn't what a gate typically does. Typically you set that threshold and it, it, it respects that. But we're in kind of a unique situation here. So what you may have noticed is, I'm gonna wind back and see. Anytime you see other things pop up here in these meters, that's those gates being opened by his speech. Those are awesome. I mean, I think Teresa? when it came to like the rise of Clubhouse. Jerry right, and Teresa. Big buzz. All right, and then here, let's go into where, where Jerry starts talking. We talked about. It was just around teaching other people how to create, right? And so he's got a great TikTok following. I've made money as a public speaker. So you saw there all three meters lighting up. He's right next to Justin. It's bleeding into Justin's mic. Jerry, again, he's a great speaker. He's super even. You can even tell, again, we've, we've done this on stream before and I love this. By the way, I've never met these guys. I've only met them virtually. They're phenomenal. I can't wait for this podcast to go live so you can learn more about them. Um, but as we've discussed before, when you take a look, now, again, it's unfair with Teresa's because hers actually had the most, most noise bleeding into her mic. So you can't really appreciate her her dynamics. But this second track here is Jerry. Look at look at how even that is. That is not compressed. That is how he speaks. Right? That and look again now Justin, you can see the difference. You can actually see how Justin's waveform sort of it 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 modulates in terms of amplification. Jerry is super even. Super even. So for using things like a compressor, for using things like a gate, even though, I mean, you can see all of this here, this is all noise. This tells you, maybe if we have a, a, a chance towards the end here, I'll, I'll 
I'll turn off all the effects. I wish we had a global effects mute for audio in Premiere. It's, it's a drag having to do it this way. Um, all of that's noise. So he's so even, it's really easy to use a gate on him alone. And if we sort of just mute, uh, sorry, solo his and take a listen, right? So it's quiet, right? I can set his threshold a bit higher because when he kicks in and starts talking. It was just around teaching other people how to create, right? And so he's got a great TikTok following. I've made money as a public speaker. And so bringing on guests, friends of ours. So we've had Avi Gandhi, who is a LinkedIn top creator. All right. And you can kind of get the idea of my settings here. So again, threshold minus 32. Um, it's, it's fairly wide open, but his volume is so different from everyone else's that, again, I can have a fairly uh, fairly long release, a little over a quarter of a second, about uh, uh, one-tenth of a second hold, one millisecond attack, kicks in pretty quickly, right? And, the, and by the way, if I say right after every statement, I'm going to force myself to put a dollar into a jar. I, I've, I've been doing so many of these, and it's become like a cultural thing. You know what I'm saying? Right? Like, right, right. Driving me through the roof. So putting this on myself, if I say right in the chat, you tell me and I'm, I'm putting something in there, okay? So in any case, um, Jerry is, is easy, but because he too has sort of a low, not quite baritone, but it's, there's a lot of tonality in there. It's bleeding into all the respective mics, even more so than everyone else's. The only one who's really not bleeding into anybody is Teresa, although she gets really excitable in some of these scenes and then it opens up their game. So all of this to say that this is where we're going to use automation to solve this problem. Now, I'm not going to do the entire track, obviously, uh, but this is a super useful feature. And again, if you've never done this before, this can really change the way you work with audio in Premiere Pro. Just checking on the side. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. No questions yet. Okay. So... With effects applied, and by the way, these are track effects, just to be very clear, these are not clip-based effects. So the automation that I'm applying here is going to apply to the track. Now that's significant, and it's significant where you perform this operation, because if I do this track automation, and then I'm like, ah, you know what, I need to cut out a minute in the middle, well, the track automation doesn't cut along with it. It's track automation, it stays on the track. So you can all, you have the ability in the effects controls, just like you do with um, uh, any of your visual effects here, you can keyframe and do things in there as well. I don't typically do that for audio, but you can at the clip level if you want to do these same automations. I'm doing this here in the timeline at the track level because the edit is locked, right? That's the key. The edit's been locked. Actually, this one isn't, but when I actually did this for, for in the end, the edit was locked, okay? So something really important to keep in mind. I want everybody to go and do a bunch of automation today and then, you know, send it out to producer. Oh, sounds great. Yeah, oh, we have these 84 edits. And then you do it and now your sound mix is destroyed. By the way, if you do that and the editor comes back and says, oh, I've got 84 edits for you. How do you fix that? Just do a render of the audio file, of the audio track itself right? So that you, ah, dollar. There's one. Do a render of the audio track itself, rendering the effects to it, and then do the edit. Okay. All right. All right is fine. It's just the right. That's what I won't do. Okay. So let's zoom in here. Now down at the track level, I got to make sure my zoom is, you can see everything. Now, I believe you have, I believe the keyframe button is visible by default. By the way, if you've never sort of adjusted manually, you know, track height, you can do that here. You can also hold down shift or shift command or control. I always forget which, I always have to do it and figure which, to globally um, raise the height of all the tracks. And if you twirl open or click open show keyframes, what this will also show you is any of the audio effects that you have applied in their uh, respective effects insert slots, including volume and mute, so the actual track keyframes for, again, whatever is on the track, 
keyword track, not clip. So if you move something out of there and put something else in that track, those same keyframes, those same things will apply as well as the panner, okay? Because we're using dynamics, now what we see are all of the aforementioned parameters of that effect. And the one that for this in particular, and for doing this kind of a thing where you set the threshold and it, it just keeps getting opened by external forces, the threshold setting is what you want to automate. Now you might ask, why not do like enabling the effect or the, just the global bypass? You can do those. Here's the thing. And this could be a premiere issue. It could be this particular effect. I haven't auditioned this with all the others. I can tell you with this one, if you use bypass, because that would make sense, right? Gate appropriately when person is talking and then just bypass it or, 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 or disable it altogether when they're not or something like that. If you sort of on off it, I've had some like digital pops and or clicks in doing that. So I don't typically automate the bypass for this specific effect. That's not to say all of them do that. It's just for this. I ran into that. Doesn't really matter. What you really want to automate is the threshold setting, right? How, how much signal it requires. By the way, this is, this is signal shooting. This is threshold. <laughs> Realizing I'm like, what is he doing? Teen Titans? No. Uh, this is the signal exceeding the threshold. You want to adjust the threshold. So let's go and select auto gate threshold. And you'll see that that line kind of moved there. All right. So here's where Teresa starts talking. And for the moment, I'm going to mute these others. All right, let's just wind back for a second here. Thank you. And I love that. Okay, so right away. Thank you. I can, I can probably go a little less aggressive with this. Right, but this isn't bad. We'll see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Command, and I'm going to drop a couple of keyframe values in here. And by the way, this is telling you that right now it's at minus 29.5. So if I want to open it up, I'm going to drop it down. Now, I'm not going to drop it yet because I want to go to where the end of her speech is. Video events, right? Awesome. Right. So you can see it closes. Yeah brilliantly on its own. Fence, right? Awesome. But Justin keeps triggering it to open. So that means we need to raise that threshold. So we're going to set a keyframe right about here. A keyframe right about here. By the way, if you do them too close together and you're not zoomed in enough, uh, you will ultimately create a Bezier in lieu of that, which I say because I've done it a million times. <laughs> so instead, well, first of all, I think we're going to raise this in general so that it's not as, so that it's more sensitive. So let's raise this to around minus 20.4. But when she's talking, let's go to around minus 38. All right. So Essentially, nothing's going to get through now that I've, I've raised that threshold, unless I wanted to when she's talking. All right. So let's take a listen now and see what that sounds like. Like you guys, and incredible week here. Thank you. And I love that you and Justin. Now, again, even the stuff before. Like you guys. And That's Jerry bleeding into her. So again, we're just going to raise the overall for this one, 20.2 or 20.4, as close as we can get. Zoom level will affect how your accuracy there. So let's wind back. We should hear nothing. Clean. Let's wind back even more so you believe me. Jerry should not be poking through at all. Nope. Silent. Teresa. Thank you. And I love that you and Justin um, want to give back and teach others all about the creator economy. So I remember you did some LinkedIn audio events, right? Now, again, there may be some moments where Teresa says something. And now, because the threresholder. threshold is so high, yeah, see it kicked in a little late there. 
we need to readjust. So yes, this is kind of manual, but for something like this, where it requires a lot of cleanup because you can't fix mic proximity. All the AI that's coming out, it's a drag, but uh, that's, that's not something that, that we have quite yet. Actually, you can, get, you can start doing this real quickly, come back in here, right? Make a quick adjustment. Tell us what were some of the topics you talked about. Clean, okay? Now, same thing, again, here, we had some bleed onto Jerry's and Justin's, right? Things are, ah, second dollar. I will, I will stop doing this. By the power of Thor Ragnarok, I will stop doing that. So we first want to go back to Justin. So let's go to Justin's down here. I don't think Teresa was bleeding into his, but let's see. Oh, a little bit. See, it's now again, I could probably go a little more aggressive with his setting, but I've gone through this a bunch of times and there's just, it's just the environment, you know? If there were any kind of sound dampening, if they were in a, just a better room and positioned slightly differently, and I can't see how the microphones were clipped on them, but maybe there would be chance of more isolation, but this is something you're gonna run into. So here we go. And yes, oh, I see someone was just asking you to Bezier the keyframes. Yes, I said it, I said it, but yes. Can you do this with Parry EQ? Yes, you can, Gino. So here's the thing, and we're gonna get into this in a second. Every effect that you throw in here, and I'll throw in a parametric for here, I'll do it right now just so you can see it. I'll take it right back out, but just so you're aware. Oh, I'm filtering EQ. Parametric. All right. And we're down at Justin. Zoom in so you can see that. Track effects slot five, parametric EQ, and then all of the settings. All right. Now this one, I said, all right, this one in particular, the bypass, the global bypass. And then I think this is the bypass for um, the shelf filters. No problem with that for whatever reason. And this is by the way, not uncommon to have little sort of poppy clickies, even with hardware compressors. If you, if you manually sort of bypass some of them, I remember uh, Behringer made, I have one, a, a, the composer, fantastic compressor limiter gate, or maybe it was the focus, I can't remember exactly. It was one of them, either focus right or Behringer. And if you manually engage the button, it was this very, you would get this very noticeable k -k. But if you just, you know, obviously adjusted the dial, so to speak, you wouldn't get that. It even happens on hardware. But we need to do the same thing here. So with Justin, I'm talking so much. Now again, because his dialogue is not quite, he's, you can see a lot of noise in there, but I can see where he ends and Jerry begins, which is right about here. Answer questions in person or in, in real time, so. All right, okay. So I'm going to set a keyframe. This is going to be the end here. Set another one here, another one here, and another one here. Now again, because we were hearing some of Teresa ble bleed through, I'm going to raise this. Oh wait, am I in the right keyframe? Am I in the right, what am I doing? I I'm not in the right one. What am I doing? Threshold, do that again. Okay, 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 okay. Why am I not seeing my values here? Oh, because they're hidden. All right, so we'll take this to same thing, around minus 20.2 decibels, that should be fine. It's probably very small on the screen there, you probably can't see it. And then similarly, he's at minus 26. Let's drop him down. To the, he's a bit louder, so we don't need it to be as open. So let's maybe do minus 33. So Teresa, just because of the way hers was captured and the dynamics of her speech in this particular uh, environment, she needed a little bit more. She needed a, you know, a little less aggressive threshold. So let's take a listen. That's wind, wound back way too far. All right, we'll hear Justin kick in. Yeah, see, I did it too soon. Audio events, right? 
Yeah, yeah. Right, way too soon. So here's what we do with that. Yeah, yeah. So the yeah, yeah, we want that. That's okay. We're gonna let some of that come in. And let's just move this right here, or I could delete that, or delete this one rather. Okay. Smooth right in. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. Those are awesome. I mean, I think when it came. And let's see, this might be too much of a ramp here, but let's take a listen. Now, again, the, the gate itself should be also closing at this point, but there's so much background noise. Let's see. In, in real time. So. Yeah, see, we need we need that to close way sooner because she's bleeding through and Jerry will absolutely bleed through. So here we go. Set it here. Minus 20. So. All right. And again, I could probably even get even more accurate with that. You know, when I'm by myself. I'm in, in real time. So. Smooth. Okay. And lastly, let's do Jerry. Jerry's easy. We don't really have to do much for his, but we're going to do it anyway just to keep everything super consistent and clean. So let's go to here, here. And what's his? Oh, I just did it again. I'm not on the right. I'm getting too excited. I'm on, I'm on volume keyframes. Let's go to threshold. And same. So one, two. One, two, let's go to Jerry. Uh, you know, be an early test for that. You know, try different things in the beta world. All right. Okay. Now, again, same thing. Maybe he doesn't need all that much. Maybe I even raise his a bit. His really just, it had the best isolation, so it doesn't require as much help as the other. It was just around teaching other people how to create, right? And so he's got to. OK. So now, again, we're not going to spend all the time on this. But now, if I shrink these back up, let's put them all back on. You remember what they, listened, what they sounded like, what they listened like. What they sounded like before, where everything was kind of bleeding into itself. But now if we take a listen, let's put them all back on. And if you watch the meters, it's going to be nice and clean and isolated. And the other thing about this, and I just want to point this out. Now, for podcast production, I was having a chat with somebody about this. Actually, I just, I can't remember if this was a, a, an iTunes thing or it was a Dolby thing, but it was, spa and this was audio only, but like spatial podcast mixes. And I get it. Again, as someone who appreciates a stereo sound field, Although this was, again, more, it's supposed to be immersive. I, every, I, please stop using that word. It's not. It's, it's, it's uh, barf-inducing for me. Not immersive. You want me to barf? Tell me it's immersive. I'll put in headphones. I'll start barfing. But what it was is, obviously, they're using some, like, Dolby Atmos-type effects where things seem very left and right but in space, but not left, right, but kind of left here and there. And that's uh, fine, whatever. The thing is, for audio only, in general, you, you, you just, and a, and a podcast, you just, you kind of want things both the same in both speakers. Maybe a little bit of placement. I actually have produced a couple recently where it was in a really great, quiet, dry room, and they were across a long table. So it made sense to add a little bit of space because there was some of that room tone, nice room tone, in the captures. There was no real bleed, but just room tone. So I did a very subtle stereo pan, and it just gave it just a little bit more dimension. You still felt centered, but there's a little bit of dimension. Same thing here. So again, because you're watching this, it can be a little weird to have all the sound coming through the center when people are kind of spread apart. Now, because these are also exported as stereo files, doing, again, these percentages, so Teresa is, you know, 16% to the left. It's not, that's not really percent. It isn't, because it would feel more, but okay, we'll say it is. Jerry's 21% to the right, 
Justin is about 15%. Again, I'll play the, the, the end result in a couple of minutes. Um, and adding in a little bit of room reverb, again, small room, non, you know, slight reflectivity to, again, mimic where they are. It just gives a little space without trying to sound like things are weirdly, wildly out of phase, okay? So, and what's nice is once everything is isolated, and if you're in headphones, you'll be able to just sort of more quickly identify if there are other anomalies or issues that you need to deal with. I'm not saying you're always gonna do that. Generally, like I said, for audio only, no. Everything's in the center for me. Maybe if the situation makes sense, you know, a little bit of spatial panic. One of the things, oh, now I'm remembering. One of the things that this, this I think it was at Dolby, that they were doing was, I think the podcasts were mono. So it was doing its own kind of AI-based spatial separation of the speakers. That's cool in and of itself. I'll give them that. But again, don't, don't make the head, don't make my head swirl while I'm listening as they're talking about, you know, piano wire. Yes, that just, it just adds fatigue. It does. Spatial mixing adds listening fatigue. Fight me. You know, it just, I don't love it. Anyway, let's take a listen. I used to go down this path and get to meet friends like you guys and to, you know, it's been an incredible week here. Oh, need to adjust LA that with for the Adobe team. Thank you. And I love that you and Justin um, want to give back and teach others all about the creator economy. So I remember you did some LinkedIn audio events, right? Yeah, yeah. Those were awesome. I mean, I think when it came to like the rise of Clubhouse, right? That was the clean, right? Isolated with audio and then LinkedIn. Let's keep going. All right, here comes Community Jerry. Side, um, being able to answer questions in person or in, in real time. So tell us what were some of the topics you talked about? It was just around teaching other people how to create, right? So nice, right? Yes. Jerry, before we, I hadn't readjusted it. This section, yes. So you could just see like, it's so isolated now. There's none of that weird bleed, all done via automated parameters. So this is a workflow that you can use for anything. If you're gonna use the, the noise gate, highly recommend, again, you know, playing around with the noise gate settings. And again, um, if this is the issue that you're running into, automating the threshold is gonna solve that. Now, there may be times too where, I mean, you're probably never gonna need to automate attack, assuming the person is sort of, you know, people, they speak a certain way, a certain attack is gonna work for the way someone talks and how the microphone was positioned, how it captures them. Probably not gonna need to really ever change that. Same for release. The release is just, again, it's, le and the hold, these are leaving that window open, smooth, adding kind of a smoothness. Think of it almost like a gradient before it fades to black, just to kind of make it a bit, so you probably don't necessarily wanna automate that. I could see a situation where if you were in a live environment and you wanted the gate to close sooner, maybe you do it with an automated release, but you could also do it with an automated threshold. So that's why I'm saying threshold kind of gives you, it gives you all the flexibility because it's essentially controlling when it kicks in and when it shuts down. Pretty, pretty effective, pretty cool. All right, so that's a little bit on automating the dynamics effect, which I realize now, just to show you, you will find it under amplitude and compression dynamics, not to be confused with dynamics processing. Now, and just to be clear, you can, there is a noise gate slash downward expansion functionality of the dynamics processing effect. It, it sounds the same, it is, 850,000 times more difficult to set if you don't really know how to set a compressor manually. And in particular, this one, because it's graph based and yeah, it, it's, it's headache inducing. So it's great, it's a great sounding effect. Automating it is a challenge and it doesn't have those standard parameters that I just showed you. Dynamics does, so highly recommend using that one. And again, that's our only native noise gate here in Premiere and Audition. All right, this really sounds similar to the 8D audio thing where they make the sound pan around in circles. So yeah, I mean, you know, again, I suppose if the first time you're hearing something like that, it is cool in the moment, 
not prolonged though. It's the, it's no different than th- you know 3D TV was going to uh, be the savior of home entertainment. You just you just can't be in that kind of environment for too long. Heck, Oculus 2 for which I don't use but my my children occasionally allow them to venture into it. Even in its instructions it's like you really shouldn't wear this for more than 30 minutes at a time. You should take a break. <laughs> which you know, if if Meta is already telling you that, you know that it, you know it's probably 10 minutes. But, you know, they want you to get hooked. It probably takes a little more time than 10 to get super hooked. I don't know. I'm not a gamer. I'm not an Oculus fan. Same reason. I barf. So that doesn't interest me. Okay. Checking other questions here. Paloma saying, I was taught to only pan or make it spatial if you're editing music, particularly a band that is on different areas of the stage. Yeah, I mean, good example. Like, again, I think there's, there's a valid reason for doing some of that outside of stereo speakers. And now, of course, there are effects that can in the sort of binaural sense, simulate space. But, you know, listen to Pet Sounds, Beach Boys, 1966. Listen to uh, really good mixes from the 60s and 70s where it was just stereo, not quad. You can create the same space and depth with two speakers without getting into spatial. Really spatial, and you're, you're, you're often, especially if you're talking about spatial mixing via iTunes, and a lot of these other services, even Dolby, you're actually sacrificing some frequency response to be able to adhere to that sort of spatial environment. And as you go up in channels, the same thing applies. You know, it could be nice for film. I've talked about that before, you know. I'm not a huge fan. You know, whatever. I'm just, you know, if you like it, you like it. But for music, yeah, I mean, same. I've heard some great you know, 5.1 mixes on Blu-ray of various, you know, things, Beatles, Pink Floyd. It's fine. I I don't, even I, who's a complete music nerd snob, I, and I do listen to albums in their entirety, generally, when I want to listen to something, I'm not going to sit for, you know, 48 minutes and just sit there immobile as I take in 5.1 of an album. I mean, and I'm the guy who they want to sell that to. I don't do that. No, not that you can't or don't. And some people do, but you know, so yeah. Anyway, why don't I rant some more in a world left here, there and everywhere. Very good Beatle reference. Cody, 10 points for you. Okay. Real talk with Jason Levine. <laughs> Thanks, Paco. <laughs> Ask me how I really feel. Okay. All right, we've got about 10 more minutes. So, oh, and let me just, now that I'm here and I can undo some of this, I'm going to just turn, Just so you, so you just got a good taste of what this sounds like. Here, I'll just play it back again, kind of isolated for you. Economy. So I remember you did some LinkedIn audio events, right? Yeah, yeah. Those were awesome. I mean, I think when it came to... Okay, so that's, that's again, this is not the finished version. This is just a little bit of sort of denoise, compressed and, and affected, nothing added back in. I'll, sh- I'll share that, I'll, I'll play that for you too. We got some time. Let me turn off all the effects here, just so you can hear. Actually, here, I'll leave this on because this was just leveling. I'll leave those on because otherwise it's gonna be hard to hear. Let's turn off the denoise and the dynamics. And same thing. So here's here's where it started. In LA with the Adobe team. Thank you. And I love that you and Justin um, want to give back and teach others mm-hmm. all about the creator economy. So I remember you did some LinkedIn audio so events, right? So it's glassy. Yeah. Those were awesome. I mean, I think when it came to like the rise of Clubhouse, right? That was a big buzz when it came with audio. And then LinkedIn, we've both been on LinkedIn for what, five, six years probably. And then when it gets to Jerry, because again, he has just such a deep, clear voice. I don't know if you can really, again, if you're in headphones, maybe you can. But you actually can hear the glass because it's it's just bouncing everywhere on top of all of this noise. And then... Tell us what were some of the the topics you talked about. It was just around teaching other people how to create, right? And so he's got a great TikTok following. I've made money as a public speaker. Significant, right? So, ah, three dollars. Did it again. Did it again. 
<laughs> Do you know, you'll end up with a vocoder with Despacito. I don't even know what that's related to, but that just sounds funny. So, okay. Uh, all right. I'll play the, the final one. Well, I'll do an A-B for you right then. I just want to get to this one thing so I don't run out of time. We really only have 10 minutes. So this is a scene that we've shown before. This is just to showcase another method of automating parameters for sound design. Uh, in this case, our studio reverb, where you got kind of this, we're kind of creating this sort of dreamy sequence, kind of echoey, weird thing. Maybe we do some automated blur. And this in and of itself too is, is nothing particularly special. So uh, here, I'll just play this back where it is right now. Remind, remind myself what I'm doing here. Okay, so I'm going to adjust, I'm gonna set this to zero. Set a keyframe there of blur. Run that back. And then adjust that to 207 so that this gets gradually less blurry. Okay. Same concept, right? We're using, oh, you can't even see what I'm doing there because the effects controls are hidden. Here it is. So I just added two little keyframes for blurriness right here. Okay. But now we're going to use the uh, parameters for Studio Reverb. Tool this up here. So I can do the same thing. Uh, we're going to adjust that wet dry balance. Right now I have it totally wet. So it sounds very echoey and you're not hearing any of the direct signal. So we're gonna come down to the dialogue mix. Now this is, this is key as well. So I happen to have all the dialogue grouped, submixed to a dialogue track. Here's Studio Reverb. And in this case, I'm going to automate two things. I'm gonna automate the dry level and then decrease the wet level. It's two separate sliders, which means two automation passes or two different sets of keyframes. So first thing is we're gonna adjust adding more of that dry output level, and then we'll just, we're gonna back off the wet level. So let me select this, all right? And let's just start with a keyframe right about here, where it is. And then we'll add a keyframe here. Again, gradually increase it. So maybe we'll go to around 64%. Let's see what that sounds like. If I talk to you, she can You see, she's what they call professional, and you're what they call can't win for losing. Okay, so gradually bringing that dry signal up, kind of getting out of that blurry haze. Not visually the greatest. Just trying to showcase, you know, a little sound design idea. <coughs> okay, now, same thing. We want to gradually decrease the wet balance. Now, I don't exactly know what I want that to be. So here's the thing. If I go into, and just, I'm sure, I don't want to do it this way. This would probably be something that I would do in real time. You've seen me do this like this, where I actually come in here and, I, in fact, maybe, maybe I will. We can actually use the automation, the track automation settings here to do the same thing. So if I go into write mode, this is now going to allow me to adjust any parameter here and it will capture that keyframe for me and I don't have to draw it in. That's one of the nice things with audio effects. You can do that. The reason I didn't do that at the start and the reason I didn't do that here is because it goes into touch mode. It's very easy to mess that up after the fact, especially with threshold settings as in the, uh, gate that we just showed you. So I drew those keyframes. For something like this, I, I kind of need to hear it as I'm doing it. So I am going to actually use the right automation on the track here. It's the same as me drawing it. I just don't know where I want to leave that wet setting. So let's go into uh, here. Let me first wind this back. Let's go into write mode. And let's go ahead and play this back now. 
Well, but Dwayne, I, I, I don't want you to have to win the money. Amy just, she split and took for the hall, she... If I talk to Amy, she came to see me. You see, she's what they call professional. Okay. So in this case now, it just made that wet adjustment. Oh, but you know what? Did it automatically, did it overwrite? That's interesting. Why did it do something to the dry level? That's weird. Shouldn't have done that at all. Huh. That sounds like a bug. Okay. Yeah, it did. Strange. We're going to take that all the way down again. Okay. In any case, if I show off the show off, if I go to the wet output level, you can see via way too many keyframes, it just drew the path right there. Okay, so now if we play this back, you should also, you'll see the two faders flying right here on the screen. No hands. If I talked to Amy, she came to see me. You see, she's what they call professional, and you're what they call can't win for losing. Okay. Easy. All right. And as mentioned, now again, it's in touch mode. So that means that if I touch one of those parameters, wherever that cursor is, when I play back, it's going to change things, but it'll then go back to the default state. Ah, oh, that's why it did that. Ah, oh, son of a gun. So yeah, you don't want to mix these modes. I shouldn't have done that. I just confused myself. Draw or automate, really. That's the best way to do it. I should have just, I should have drawn both of them, wet and dry, instead of, sorry. I should have automated <laughs> My brain is broken. Don't mix drawing manually and automating the effect. If you need to tweak after the fact, you can draw tweak in the timeline. But if you're going to do it in a single effect, commit to using one method. That's what I'm trying to say. Whew, that was difficult to get out. Okay. Uh, all right. So let me, let me see. I'm going to switch to the camera for a second. Let me see if I can open up the other the finished version of that other uh, podcast real quick. Just want to open it. Just bear with me here. I'm going to open it into this session. I just, I didn't want to, uh... oh, I don't think it will. It, uh, it's not going to let me. I don't think, let's see. Let's see what happens here. Oh, that's going to work. Oh, it did. Okay, cool. Nice. All right. So let's go back. All right, got to do this fast. Got two minutes. Okay. 255.01. So here is where we started. And I love that you and Justin um, want to give back and teach others all about the creator economy. So I remember you did some LinkedIn audio events, right? Those were awesome. I mean, I think when it came to like the rise of Clubhouse, right? All right, and then Jerry. It was just around teaching other people how to create, right? And so he's- All right, original. Oh, and what did I say the time was? Two. Okay, oh, of course, I don't know the exact timing now because- it was right here. Who's who? Justin. Who's here? Okay, here's the here's the final. You're just gonna have to. It's not a, the, maybe the exact same spot. Here we go. Today. Thank you for oh, thank you for having us. This Did I leave incredible. out anything? Because you're both so accomplished and. Um, I mean, I mean, I'm a father, so you know, I think I think that's important in terms of how I view. All right. Let's go to this. And get to meet friends like you guys, and to you know, it's been an incredible week here in LA with the Adobe team. Thank you. And I love that you and Justin um, want to give back and teach others. Again, the original. It's got a great TikTok following. I've made money as a public speaker. And so. And the final. All about the creator economy. So I remember you did some LinkedIn audio events, right? Yeah, yeah. Those were awesome. I mean, I think when it came to. Pretty sweet, right? Yes. Audio. 
All right, friends, we're actually going to end on time for a change. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this masterclass. We will see you next week for the last one of the year. Until then, have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. And we'll see you again next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.